program we're looking at electronic speech communication devices for people without speech. To show us how technology is helping such people are Jan Kirkland, a speech pathologist at the Microcomputer Application Centre at Urala in South Melbourne, and Gloria Steos, a speech pathologist at Urala's special school in Glenroy. Welcome. Jan, just what is an electronic communication device? It's a device that's portable and it's for people who are non-speaking. There are some electronic communication devices that have a synthetic voice and they have a voice output and they'll speak the person's message. Most of the devices that we're showing today have a voice output. And there are some devices that have a printer and they print out the person's message. And of course there are some devices that have both the voice and the printout. Right. Gloria, just who uses these sorts of electronic devices? They're people who can't speak because they have a disability. These people would include people born with cerebral palsy, people who've suffered a stroke, and people who have brain damage as a result of an injury of some sort. All right. Uh, Jan, we've seen that there are several devices here. How do you know which is the best sort of electronic device for, for which sort of person? When we're deciding on the most appropriate device for somebody, we look at quite a lot of skills in the person and we also look at her communication needs and her lifestyle and then we match the device to all of those things. There are two major skills that we look at in each person. The first one is whether the person can spell and read. If the person can't spell, then she needs to use an electronic communication device that can be operated without spelling skills. And something like this one here would be good for that because you can see on the keyboard that it has photographs and pictures and symbols to represent the language that's been programmed into it. If the person can spell, it's really good to use that skill in your communication system, so she would need a device that would allow her to use the spelling skills, like the Epson speech pack there that just has a keyboard. The other thing we look at is how the person is going to operate the device. Some people are able to touch the keyboard with their hand or perhaps with a pointer of some sort, so they can use the device where they do operate it by touching the keyboard. But there are some people who are unable to do that and they need to use a device with what we call a switch, right, and they just have to hit the switch. I've got some switches here to show you. Yes, I'd like to see them. Okay. This one here's a switch that's a little bit like a cushion. You could use this with any part of your body. And in fact, all switches you can use with any part of your body. Some of them are made for specific parts. We always choose a part of the body that the person has consistent voluntary control over. All right. This switch here could be used with your hand and it's a very light switch. You just have to touch it and it will activate the device it's plugged into. This switch here is a little bit heavier and so it's for people who would use it with their hand or maybe with their foot but who don't have such a light touch and they, you can bang onto this one, it won't damage the switch. This one here we usually use with uh, people's head if they have good head control and they can just move their head like this and activate the switch. And this one here is for, we usually use it under people's chins. So you can just mount it on their wheelchair Oops, and they can just access it like this. Okay. A switch can be plugged into uh, not only communication aids but also into computers and other electronic appliances like a radio or a cassette player and people can control the, those devices. Mm. Those are the two major things we look at. We also look at a lot of other things and then usually those two things narrow down the field so that there's only one or two communication aids left to choose between and then we look at all of the other things and narrow it down even further. I would like to add though that the electronic communication aids are really good 
uh, for independence and people use them a lot if they have one but it's not the only thing that they use to communicate. Most people who have one also use their communication board or perhaps signing or something like that as cool. well. Also with us is Vicky Radley. Vicky is a student at the Urala Special School in Glenroy. Vicky, welcome to TV Ed. Now you've got an electronic communication device. How do you use yours? I'll just add that Vicky does use hers with a computer as well. She operates her computer the same way as she operates her electronic communication aid. I use the switch that I check with widely the letter of the alphabet are displayed on the small screen and I check wide switch when the letter I want flashes I do this because I can't use my chance on the keyboard. Well, electronic communication devices have only been available for a couple of years. How did you communicate before then? And Trevor, while Vicky's getting, getting ready to answer that question, you'll notice that Vicky's using, as she said earlier, her switch with the knee, and that was the most consistent controlled movement that she had, so that was the best position for um, her switch, for her communication. They do take a little bit of time sometimes, and the timing needs to be correct as well, and Vicky's just miss the letter that she wants to, to say. So if you'll bear with us, it just highlights the point that when people are using these aids, we do need to be patient and wait until um, they're ready to communicate. I have a communication board which has all the words and sentences on it. And I still use it, sometimes I have brought it a lot to show you. Yes, thank you. I'd like to see how you use the communication board. OK, Vicky, would you like to tell us which communication system you prefer to use, whether you prefer your Epson speech pack or whether you prefer your communication board? OK, it's in the first section, in the first block, yes, first line. Yes, it's in the first line. First word, I, I. All right, I, the second word, is in the second section. Is it in the first block? Yes. Is it in the first line? Is it in the second line? Right. Can't, go, am, will, like. I like, third word. Is it in the third section? Is it in the first block? Is it in the second block? Is it in the first line? Yes. Better. Slow. Fast. Because. Both. I like both. Can you tell us, Vicky, why is it that you do, pref you do like both of them and you don't necessarily have a preference of one over the other? And as Vicky's getting organised to answer that question, as I was pointing out to you to before, Trevor, it is very important that we are patient because interacting with someone using a communication device is not the same as two speaking people in a conversation. And we do have to wait until they're ready. And I think Vicky's ready to answer that now. What? She just... We'll have to wait a few moments, I think, again, as I was saying. Because Vicky can't use her hands on the keyboard, she has to wait until the letters flash across until it gets to the one that she wants. And then she hits the switch and she's ready. My Lord is quicker with people to close out to use it well. And my depth on speech pack is good because I can use it by myself. 
Mm. And Vicky's just highlighted a very pertinent point there, and that is that she can use her Epsom speech pack by herself. The most wonderful thing about this new technology is that it provides for the first time for people such as Vicky the opportunity to use and to communicate totally independently. Mm. As you saw earlier when I was working with the communication board, she was totally dependent on my interaction with her. Um, and now she's able to use through the power of the voice and the switch, a communication device, totally independently. Um, it means that she doesn't have to catch your attention with her eye and have you come across and open up the board. She can now use the power of the voice to call out from wherever. She doesn't need to be right by your side. So it's really wonderful technology. Right. Vicky, thank you for showing us that. Maybe we could have a closer look at some of the other communication devices that you've brought in. Mm. The first one we're going to look at today is the Vocris. This communication aid is the only one that's made in Australia and in fact it's manufactured here in Melbourne. You can see that you don't need to be able to read and spell to use this one because as I mentioned before you can represent the language in it with symbols or with photographs and pictures. You do need to be able to touch the keypad to use this particular device and the way it works is that you just touch the picture or the sentence that you want and it will speak that in a synthesised voice. I'll just give you a demonstration now. I want to watch television, please. I just asked if I could watch television. You can also attach a printer to this communication aid, and that's very useful, particularly for people who are using it at school. They can record some of their schoolwork on it, or for letter activities, and they can write letters with the printer. Can you, can you choose your own words for it, or do you have to use the ones that are... No, already there. you can choose your own words. In fact, you have to choose your own words when you order one. What usually happens is that the person using the Vocris and her family and all the people who work with her will sit down together and have a big, long discussion about what words she needs and what phrases and sentences she uses frequently and then make a vocabulary plan and send that off to the manufacturer and the manufacturer will program the voice for them. All right, well, what happens in the case where a person can't touch the keyboard? You've, you've said that was necessary. Yes. There is a version of the Vocris that people can use if they can't touch the keyboard. It's this one here. You use this one with a switch in a similar fashion to the way Vicky was using her switch. I'll just hold the switch here in my hand and you can see that the lights are flashing down row by row down the Vocris and I'm going to wait until the lights get to the row that I want. I think that they're in the row that I want and then the lights will flash along each item in the row and I'll hit the switch again when it gets to the one I want. No. I'll just try and find a sentence that I can say so that you can hear it a bit better. Mm. So the lights are still flashing down, still down, and I want the next row. So I hit my switch, and the Vocus knows that I want this row, and the lights go along. I want something in this space here. Do you mind if I smoke? Okay, that gives you a better idea of the voice. I was just asking if I could smoke. I don't really want to. No, you can't. <laughs> is, is the answer to that? I'll just point out, well, I've got this one. You'll notice this one has 160 squares on it, many more than the previous Vocris. And you can, when you order your Vocris, you can choose to have a lot of vocabulary. With this one, you can have a short paragraph in, or two short paragraphs in each square. So you can see that it does have a large memory. You can put a lot of words in. Right. Well, let's have a look at another example. Here's Natalie using her Vocris in the art room at Durella. What did you do on the weekend? What did I do on the weekend? I had a good rest, had a good sleep. Mm -hmm. I lit a couple of fires, I went out to a party, mm -hmm. I had friends mm -hmm. over for tea. What did you do? Home. You went home? Mm -hmm. Did you go home for the whole three days? Mm. You did. Well, we're talking about other devices. What have you got there? 
I have here with me um, a communication device called the All Talk, which is available from the United States of America. With this particular device, one needs to be able to have good enough hand skills to touch the keypad, keypad directly. And perhaps, Jan, if you can show us how this one sounds. Would you please ring a maxi taxi for me? Book it for 5.30 cents. What you've probably noticed straight away is the difference in the voice quality between the all talk and what Jan was showing us earlier with the Vokras. This is much more human-like, whereas the Vokras sounded very much more robot-like. Um, to program this is very simple. The user, if it's a female, may choose to have a female speaking person to speak directly into a microphone which then records the information onto a microchip. Unfortunately, this, this device isn't available for people who don't have enough physical ability to touch the pad directly, and it doesn't have a printer to attach to it as well. So it's got some advantages. Yes, but and not others. Mm. All right, thanks for that. Well, let's have a look at Nikki using the All Talk to chat with Jan. Is there anything else you want to say? How about coming over to my place? Mm. We could watch videos or play mm. on the computer. I've got a great new chess game for my Macintosh. Oh, have you? I'm really good at chess. Yes. I'll come yeah. over. Are you free tonight? Mm. OK, how about 6.30? Terrific. OK. Jan, the uh, communication you device you've got there is a, a lot smaller than the ones we've seen so far. What's it called? Yes, this one's called the Touch Chalker. This is also manufactured in the United States. And again, you can use this one without having to be able to spell. You can see that it's got symbols on the front. Again, you have to touch this one to make it work. You have to have the physical skills to touch the keypad. It's a little bit different from the Vokras in that you can program this one yourself so you don't have to send anything off to the manufacturers once you've got it. The way you program it is that you just think up all of the sentences that you use frequently because it's obvious that they're the ones that you would program in. And then you think up, you use these symbols and have a code for each sentence made up of either one symbol or two symbols or three symbols. And you choose a symbol that represents the sentence for you in your mind so that in three weeks' time when you want to say that sentence you remember how to get it out of the machine with the symbols. Just to give you an example, I've programmed in the sentence um, I am hot, could you please help me take off my jumper with the symbol of the sun and the symbol of clothes because for me that represents the sentence. So I'll just let you hear the speech. And I'll just turn the speech up and do it again. I am hot. Could you please help me take off my jumper? Hmm. I, it would take a little bit of getting used to to, to easily understand the synthesised voice, but I can see that it's a great step forward to only have to touch one or two picture symbols to get a whole sentence. That must mm. save a lot of time. Yes, it's really good. It's much, much quicker than having to spell something out and even quicker than having to put words together to make up a sentence. It's excellent. All right. The other, oh, yeah, go ahead. Can I say something else about it? The other thing you can do with this machine, if there's a situation where the person can spell, then this machine will allow her to use those skills in her communication as well. And each of these symbols has a letter of the alphabet above it in the square, and it's set out like a typewriter. I'll just get Gloria to spell your name, Trevor, and we can hear what it sounds like. I'll just set it up for you. Right, okay. T R E V O R. And speak display. There we go. Trevor. Okay, so mm. it puts all the letters together to make up the word. All right, we'll have a look at this. Uh, in this next clip, we have Peggy using the touch talker. What will you do on the weekend? I hadn't really thought about it. Might do a bit of gardening. How about you? I am going to lunch for dinner. Lucky you. 
Is there a similar communication device to the touch talker for people who can't touch the keyboard? Yes, this one is the sister device to the touch talker and it's called the light talker. It does exactly the same things as the touch talker but it's for people who can't use the keyboard. You can control this with a joystick or with two switches and using a Morse code input. But I'm going to show you today a similar scanning to what you saw on the Vocus and just control it with a single switch. You can see that the lights are going down row by row and I'm going to select the row that I want and then it will go along each item in the row. I think I'm going to say a sentence about being cold. It is cold today. I think I will take an extra jumper. It's cold today. I think I'll, I'll, I'll take, take an, an extra, extra jumper. jumper. Mm, I, I worked well that out. Understand that. <laughs> yeah, it was easy. Can you adjust the speed of that scrolling? Yes, to, it's to very yourself. easy. The person who's using it, can, if they get really good at their switch and scanning, they just access this square here to make it faster, or if they're having an off day, this square here to make it slower. Right, I think we've got time to have a look at one more device. Yes. What have you got there? Trevor, I have here the Epson Speech Pack, which is what Vicky also uses. Um, with this particular device, one needs to have reasonable spelling and reading skills to operate it. This one here that I have has been set up so that um, you need to use the keyboard directly and I'll just um, push the two letters that I've coded something in. The same as the touch talker where we code a whole sentence under one, rather than symbols as, as we saw with the touch talker, we code under a number of letters. So I have something coded under the letters HL. I'm hungry, Dad. What are we having for lunch? I got the second part. <laughs> I didn't quite understand the first part. And there are two ways that we can use it. So I've just described the one way. The other way is that we can just spell out letter for letter and have it speak the message. Now, if someone doesn't have good enough hand skills to use the keyboard directly, um, there are two other ways that the Epson Speech Pack can be used. One is the way that Vicky used it and what happens there is that the letters of the alphabet are represented on the window display and e each time the letter that flashes, if it's the one that the user would like, they hit the switch so Vicky would have hit her knee switch to operate that. And the other one is a, an Epson Scan Pack which is slightly different. It's the same body, but there's also another attachment, which is the scan pack itself. And that has row column scanning with lights, as we've seen with all the other scanning communication devices. And in that situation, one waits until the lights go down row by row until the row that they want, and then they hit their switch, and then across to the item that they want, and then they hit their switch again. All right, well, in this next clip, you'll see Dino using his Epsom speech pack to talk with his friend at school. <coughs> Most appropriate, please return. What did you get? I am going to get the present tonight. Well, Dino is obviously using the keyboard. Yes, he has enough physical ability to use the keyboard. And now you'll see Shane using his Epson scan pack. OK, that's fine. I'll bring you a taxi again. Where do you want to go? It strikes me that one of the, the main advantages of all the devices we've looked at so far is independence. Maybe, Jen, I could ask you to, to sum up. We've, we've seen quite a few devices, heard a lot of information. What are the main points that people should be aware of about electronic communication devices? Well, independence is the major benefit that you do get from an electronic communication device. And that's mostly because you can use it without needing the listener to know what you're doing. And of course, having the voice makes you very independent and also allows you to be much more assertive than you would be otherwise. You, can, you heard from the voices that most of them are synthesised speech and they're quite difficult to understand for strangers, although people do get used, families and teachers get used to them. 
there was one device that had digitised speech and that's the latest in technology and of course that's where all the research is so that eventually as microchips get smaller and more powerful people will be able to use all of their communication aids with that nice human sounding speech so that they can be sarcastic or emotional or excited, right. whatever they like. Well, it's good news for now and better news in the near future from the sound of it. Well, if you want to know more about these devices, you should contact the Microcomputer Application Centre at Urella, post box 88, South Melbourne, 3205, and the telephone number there is 690-9177. Now, our thanks to Jan, Gloria, Vicky, Dino, Shane, and the staff and students at Urella. Till next time, we'll see you then. Victorian schools can obtain a copy of this program by sending a blank cassette and a dubbing request form to the Videotape Dubbing Service, Curriculum Branch, 234 Queensbury Street in Carlton, 3053. Victorian School Inquiries, telephone 03 341 4421. Interstate School Inquiries, phone 03 628 2113.